<laughs> Hi there and welcome to Over the Garden Fence. My name is Helen Willoughby Peck and I'm a University of California Master Gardener located here in Mariposa County, California, which is in the central Sierra Nevada foothills. For those of you who might be unfamiliar with what Master Gardeners are and what we do, we are university trained volunteers that provide research-based information and training to local home gardeners on sustainable landscaping, general horticulture practices, pest management, and in general just trying to help uh, home gardeners with problems that might occur in their garden. So today we're going to talk about growing garlic because we're just about ready to harvest the last of our garlic. Uh, garlic seed, seed, can be purchased online from mail order catalogs, sometimes at your local nursery, or you can purchase it at the local grocery store if you want, with the understanding that garlic purchased at a local grocery store might already be treated with a growth inhibitor which prevents it from sprouting when it's uh, waiting around in your pantry to be used. When I say seed, I'm not talking about actual seeds, but the bulbs themselves are called seed garlic. Uh, because garlic does not grow from seed, it grows from the cloves that are found in a bulb. So there's uh, two basic types or two categories of garlic. There's hard neck garlic and there's soft neck garlic. And within those two categories, there's many varieties with different subtle flavor differences and um, potency and also uh, different uh, habits for growing depending on climate and so forth. So the differences between the two types of garlic is hard neck garlic, as the name suggests, has a very hard stalk that grows in the middle of the, the bulb itself, with fairly large sized cloves that grow in a single row around the stalk. The stalk produces a flower stalk with a flower on the end, which does not produce seeds, but produces little bulbs, which you could use for propagation, but you'll have a lot better success using the cloves from the bulb itself. The stalk is called a scape, and it should be cut out of the plant uh, before the flower head completely develops because you want the energy which would normally go to the flower and reproduction to be moved into the bulb itself to increase its size. Scapes are edible and considered quite a delicacy in the spring. They can be sauteed in stir fries, they can be chopped up just like a green onion, they can be uh, grilled, and a, a wonderful pesto can be made out of them. They're a little bit more subtle in flavor than a regular garlic clove. Soft neck garlic, however, just as the name suggests, does not have that center stalk. Its um, stalks are pretty soft and that makes it easy to braid them for storage. Uh, they have uh, cloves of all different sizes and not just growing in a single row. They're not as cold hardy as a hard neck garlic, so if you live in a very cold area you might consider growing hard neck garlic. Uh, but hard neck garlic doesn't store as well. Within a uh, maybe three or four months they're going to start drying out and possibly even sprouting. So soft neck garlic for longer storage and it's normally what you find in the grocery store although we have a on occasion found hard neck garlic at the Asian grocery store. So garlic is typically planted in the fall about six to eight weeks before your first expected frost. Depending on your climate that can be anywhere from September to November. Here, where we live at 2100 feet in the foothills, we plant in October, and that allows us enough time to let the roots grow out of the cloves themselves and get a good start in the warm soil before the first frost comes. You can plant in the spring, but your bulbs will be much smaller than they normally would if you planted them in the fall. So planting garlic is very simple and very straightforward. You simply crack open your bulb, and pull out a clove. Each one of these cloves will produce a whole new bulb in the spring. You want to keep the papery protective outer coating on it and you're going to plant it pointy side up. There's a direct correlation between the size of the clove that you plant and the size of the bulb that you'll get in the spring. So on soft neck garlic with the very small cloves that are in the center of the bulb, don't bother planting those. Keep them for dinner. So you just you want to plant in very loose lightweight soil so the bulb as it expands doesn't struggle in heavyweight soil. Plant about an inch and a half to three inches deep and about six inches apart and it's as simple as that. 
So garlic is typically harvested in the late spring or early summer. Uh, it's the last few days of May here and we know we're ready to harvest because some of the lower leaves are turning brown and dry. Uh, you don't want them to go too long if you, you don't want to go more than 50% of dry leaves because they won't store as well if you wait too long to harvest. When you think you're going to be ready to harvest, and of course this depends on your climate, so if you have a longer cold season, you're going to be harvesting later. So if you're not sure, you could dig one up, and if the cloves fill out their papery sheaths tightly, then you're ready to harvest. So harvesting is also very easy. You don't want to pull up your stalk because if you break the stalk itself, it reduces the storage potential of the bulb itself. And you don't want to damage the bulb by digging into it. You want to put your trowel or your shovel way deep under the bulb itself and pry it up. Try not to damage the roots or anything else. And it's as simple as that. So once you've harvested your garlic, you should lay them out and hose off as much soil as you possibly can. Then put them in a warm, shady area to thoroughly dry. Once thoroughly dried, you should cure them for two weeks by either hanging them, that's a good time to braid it and hang, or lay them out on a drying rack in an area that's cool, inside mostly, cool, well-ventilated area with low humidity at about 50 to 60 degrees. After the two weeks are complete, you can bring them inside and store them in a cool, dark area that has good ventilation. Don't put them in the refrigerator or they're likely to sprout. Keep the largest bulbs for planting next year.